Um, okay. I don't even know what time to start. <laughs> <laughs> we should keep track of those next time. We um, should. What else you got for me? What, 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 what else is going on? What, what have you been thinking about? All right, so going on about the, the third eye principle oh, and the idea. No, 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 no. We did a Danny. Yeah, <laughs> did we? I don't even tell. <laughs> no, it was a good sidetrack because um, it, it, it all, it's all about perception. It, right. it really is how you take in information. And like we were saying earlier, everyone's going to have their own you know, twist on it. Whether they say they don't, they do because they're different people. Right. You, right. Unless, like you said, unless I have the very same injuries you do, and that's hard to duplicate. <laughs> Will I fully understand how you move or be able to duplicate how right, you move? Right. Um, but on the same token, I was taking that third eye principle into more on uh, the combat side. Mm. And I started thinking about negative space. Ah, okay. Negative space. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah Explain yeah. this one. Yeah, so th this is fun. Um, you did a video about a lightsaber. Uh-huh. Where it was it was dark and of course the lightsabers all lit up and you were swinging it around and you asked us what do you see? And we're like, well we see a lightsaber twirling about. And you're like, okay, look at it again. I was like, what do you see now? Like, Same lightsaber, what the hell are you talking about? But what you're referring to is that the dark side. And I think other people have done this same video. The parts where the light passed, those became openings. Those became places that will become vulnerable because you understand, oh, the weapon is passed, I can attack this side. I've been conceptualizing it for myself and my own understanding as <clears throat> empty space. Right. Now, you can't see the empty space in that moment because it's going to change. Two people are moving, that space is going to go away. But like the lightsaber example, if you understand where that weapon is moving, then as it's passing, you already know it's going to be open. You already know what space is going to be available for you to take. And the more finite you can become with it and understand it, it minimizes how much you have to move to avoid somebody's attack. Right. And when I first did that, because it was during Halloween. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, in front of the house waiting for kids to come by to get some stuff. Is that how that happened? Yeah. And then I had the lights over on. And in the area that we have, we don't have a lot of kids come by because it's a cold. No, no. And then your the front of your your garage is pretty dark. Yeah, so it's kind of scary. So nobody yeah. really. But I was still standing out there, and then while I was killing time, I was doing this stuff, and I realized, oh, this would be a good lesson for the kid, you know, for the students. Right. And I said, all right. So I had somebody just video me, and I'm throwing this around, and sure enough, you know, when I watched the video for the first time, looking back at it, I said, okay. This is this is actually going to be an interesting class because it it um, it's it reinforced the idea that you want to wait for something to go by before you go and attack. It. Right. If you get there too early, you're probably going to get hit, and you're going to have to defend against it. Take and, the full run, right, yeah. right? But if you understand, oh, there it goes. Now I can go, you know. And now when you're doing the lightsaber thing, as the way it's twirling, you start to see it, and and you know, in the dark, you. Can actually see the pattern, yeah, really right? See it, yeah. So I took that as a great way to give a lesson to the students and say, "Okay, what are you actually seeing?" Like you <laughs> said, everybody, said, "Oh, we just see the light." Blah, 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 blah. I said, "But beyond that, right, right, and right." And then you started to see, and you guys started to see patterns. You said, oh, yeah, because everybody focused on the light part, right. or the attacks. Oh, that's an angle one. That's an angle two, right. or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But. Now, at this level, now I'm looking at the empty space. I'm like, oh, that's far more valuable. Of course, you have to see everything together in, in, in conjunction yeah. with what's going on. But because you also taught us to do it on both sides, now I understand, oh, what am I leaving open? Right. What space do I want to leave open yeah. to attract an attack? What are they seeing with me as what I see with them? Right. What image am I portraying in, in their perception that I can take advantage of? We're, we're almost talking science in the way we fight. Oh, yeah. Because we're looking at it scientifically. That when light passes by, yeah. that's our weapon. Mm -hmm. We understand that, oh, that's going to leave this other shape. So if this, is, <laughs> if this is the weapon, that means all of this other part is space space. Exactly. So as that's going by, that's opening up here. Oh, now that's open here. Oh, that's open. So all these areas that are opening every time this thing swings by, I know that that's when I can go in and attack. And the thing is, you don't have to necessarily wait for them to open. No, because you can. T you already understand if this is going right to left, 
Yeah. It's got to come back left to right. Right. Because this is the basic understanding of, of, of knife play or sword play or whatever. Or any, really. Yeah, right? You're on this side, well, you got to throw back this side. Right. You got to throw back this side. So once you understood that and you understand where that has to go, where it has to come from, then you have a better understanding of what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. And you start to realize, oh, whenever that gets past my center line, whether it's coming this way or this way, I, I should be get jumping in there for the attack. Right, and then the other side to that is, I can move my center line to circumvent that or make it quicker. Right. So then it feels like I'm moving faster to the opponent, but in reality, I just avoided your weapon. Yeah. Yeah. But I got closer, <laughs> right? Because you did this. That went past, but you got closer. And, and that brings up a, a point that, that we were talking about earlier. The movements, very simple. But the concepts now. So, like, well, why would you step into your opponent? Or, you know, the triangle forward, why would you step forward instead of back to avoid a strike? Well, because if I step forward, I'm still blading myself as if I would to step back right. to avoid the attack. But I'm also closer to my opponent. So now I can actually take advantage of that negative space. Right. Because I'm closing the gap for my And range. you don't have to work doubly hard to get back. Oh, right. <laughs> right, when you step back, you're going away, which means now you got to make up that space. And you're back to 50-50. You you're no longer have an advantage. Right. So those are the stuff that I, I've been playing with in my head, this, this idea of like, okay, how much do I actually need to move? And then this going back to the idea that my body isn't broken, but I'm treating it as if it were. <laughs> Just so I can better understand the concepts of why you move the way you do. Right. It's minimalism. You wait to the last second to actually do something. The punch is nearly at your face. Because I know, I've brushed up against your mustache and your <laughs> cheek. And I swing hard at you. Right. But you don't move until it's nearly there. And then it feels like my arm just goes. Going back to perception. In my head, I hit you. There is no way that you could stop me from hitting you. I am that close. I'm fully extended. I got power behind it. I'm faster. I'm younger. I'm stronger. <laughs> and then all of a sudden my brain is like, dude, it's not happening. Yeah. What went wrong? Yeah. And before I can catch up to it, you already did something else. Right. My ribs hurt. I'm on the ground. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing out of pain. It, it, <laughs> you know, and that's, you know, uh, when I move, I understand what my opponent needs to do to get to me. Mm. I also know that if I back up, then I'm on the defensive, meaning I'm not attacking him. And that's the worst place you want to be. Right. Because if he's constantly attacking you, at some point it's going to hit, or maybe at the very first point it's going to hit, but you're also backing up. When it does hit, you're going to push back even further, now you're and stumbling. you're probably going to fall over or whatever, right? So you're, you're, you're constantly trying to catch up. Right. You're behind already. And, 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 and it's not uh, the best place you want to be. Right. So, but if I move forward, not only am I bringing my opponent to me, but now all of this stuff is behind me. So if he swung at me, right. when he swing, that's back there somewhere where it's not doing me any harm. Right. Now well. I'm here doing all this <laughs> stuff, even before that one gets there. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm just pop, you know. So I'm taking care of a bunch of things all in one shot. Rather than hoping, oh, now I got an opening, let me try to do it then. Right, uh, waiting for an opening versus creating creating one. The opening. Right, and uh, being reactive and active. Again, that, that concept comes up a lot. Right. And to just to get to a deeper understanding of that and have my body do it naturally. Because that, that's one thing he didn't mention earlier <laughs> when uh, he has me uh, attack him, um, you know, out of the blue. <laughs> Is that... Half the time, well, no, I say more than half the time, his body will move before he actually knows what's going on. Oh, yeah. My, I, I'm afraid of pain. He, he is. Um, <laughs> one time, and thank God we were on mats, one time I, I tackled him from his blind side. And cheap I, shot, I, cheap I, shot. Hey, he told me to do it, and I did it. <laughs> he didn't necessarily tell me what to do. He just said, just try to catch me off guard. And I caught him off guard. I was happy for about half a second. And I remember this vividly. I tackled him. I felt his body just go down. And I'm like, I got him. I got him. Halfway down, I realized I'm on the bottom end of this all of a sudden. What's going on? 
by the time we hit the floor, you were on top of me and you were swinging your elbow towards my face at that point. To this day, I'm not 100% sure how that happened, but he gave me a hint. He said, yeah, once I felt you coming, I let my body go. So it turns out, I didn't knock him down. He let his body fall and gain control halfway down to the floor. That's right. But that's the logic. <laughs> what the hell, man? I cheat. <laughs> I'm Filipino. I do those things. Again, I don't like pain. And, and, and if I can, get, if I can use you as my mat to land on... You did. You did use me as mat. <laughs> then I'm happy. Oh, that worked out Lord. well for me. But it goes to show the illustration that your brain will mess with you because in my mind, I was victorious. I had the yeah, better yeah, the end yeah. of this. I was, yeah, I got yeah. him. Yeah, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was bad for me. Yeah. And, and, and that is the reality of it. But my head, it was something so different. And, and you know, and, and I always say that that's your brain fucking with you. <sighs> yeah, excuse the French, but Pardon. that's what it is. It, it, it really is. You're, you're, because your brain has been brought up a certain way. Since, yeah. you know, since you're a little kid. It's hot. Ooh. Yeah. You, you just, you know, your brain knows not to do certain things. Right. But when it sees certain things that looks right, then it says, yeah, yeah I got this. And then in a heartbeat, it changes. And you're like, uh-oh, my brain still thought it was okay, though. But, ah, uh, and, you, and you go down. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on getting my point or myself to that point where... I can just act on things. I, I've always felt that if you don't try so hard, yeah. Which a lot of people, you know, and, and I've seen this in a lot of other fighters, hmm. especially newbie fighters, people who think they know how to fight. Ooh. You know, the, these guys who, you know, oh yeah, I'm bad. I have a black belt or I have whatever belt, and you know, oh, I can do all these things, hmm. but they really have no clue what they're doing. <laughs> you know, lacking experience. Well, yeah, and, and they think because they're in the school and they can right. meet the other stu their fellow students because right, right, they're all right. doing the same thing. And we talked about that last time. Mm -hmm. But they feel that, oh, I'm, I'm fully capable. And they get out in the real world, and they get into a real fight, and it they're is. clueless. Right. Yeah, they're clueless. And they're, they're getting beat up, and and they don't know why they lost. It's never, you know, they think, but I'm better than this. Right. <laughs> yeah, and they're blaming themselves. And it's like, uh, blame somebody else. Right, because if you hadn't kept on teaching me and, 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 and showing me the, the error of my thought process, not even the things I do physically, but the, the way I'm thinking, I would have never understood what happened that day. Right. Even though I still don't fully know what literally happened, I know right. the outcome and I know what I felt in the moment right. prior to the outcome. And without that, in my head, I I'd probably still mulling over like, how is that possible? How is that possible? How right. is that possible? And, and a lot of it, it isn't even what I did. Mm. It's how your brain perceived <laughs> what I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> You did what you know to do. Right. That's To me, that was a natural reaction. Right. Oh, I'll switch. Boom. You know. <laughs> but for you in your head, like you said, it completed the whole thing to a point where I can raise my hands and I won victoriously. Right. And I was planning my victory dance. Yeah. You, you did all these things because you understood that I'm making contact. I'm grabbing him. I'm, you know, we're going and he's falling. So in your mind, even my even my act of me just letting myself go so I could fall and and controlling that fall where I could turn my body, your momentum is uh ah, and once I shifted, you're gonna go. Because again in your head everything is going good. Yeah, everything was right. Yeah, everything was perfect. Oh I finally got, got him. him off guard. You know, I got him good. You know, I can trash talk him all day long. And it was not to be. <laughs> But that's the, you know, and, and that's what we have to learn. How do we keep ourselves from falling into that trap of having our brain, right? That was my next question. Right. Because, oh, of course that has to be Because, the again, there's, there's nothing wrong with, with, with other schools and, and getting your black belt. I mean, I look at black belts and I hold them in the highest esteem. Right. Because they, they put a lot of work into right. it, getting what they have. Right. Yeah. Well, okay, not all of them. The <laughs> ones I've met have. Um, <laughs> But how do you keep that? Even in what we do, how do you keep yourself from getting to that point where you're just so overconfident that you miss the things that could potentially save your life? My secret is this. Everybody I'm going to fight is better than me. Right? I always say that to myself. I tell you guys. 
You know, yeah. assume that the guy you're gonna fight is way better than you. Yeah. Because now sense. you're more cautious. You're like, oh shit, you know, you're more concerned. <laughs> what do you, you know, okay, if he's better than me, then he's, he probably knows. So now you become more more leader of everything that moves, all the little movements. You start to pay attention more. You become a little paranoid about what you should or shouldn't do. And then until he proves that he can't fight for shit. <laughs> <laughs> until then you, he's on the ground. Then, then you get the confidence. Okay, right. now I'm fine. I'm okay. I could beat this guy. But if you can't beat him, then you're still cautious that you're trying to keep away and do, do the things you need to do right. Uh, it, it's funny you, you said that, the, the, the caution and you're paying attention to the little nuances. Because, yeah. um, and, and this is the part that I am trying to reach to your level. Not because you do anything physically, but, but the perception behind it. Right. You have this way of not paying attention to any one detail in particular at any given point. That you're able to see the entirety of the body. So you see the... I can only imagine, and this is only my, my limited perception of it, you see the twitches in people's movements, you see the weight shift, you know when a punch is coming, which side is coming from because of the way that they do things. And, and that's what I'm, I've been working and why I'm mulling this particular idea over in my head is because I want to get to that point where I can see the subtle nuances to understand <coughs> what's happening in front of me to a greater degree. At the gym that we teach at, uh, it's a place called uh, Physique Magnifique over in South San Francisco. Uh, 387 Grand Avenue. It's a plug. <laughs> uh, a shameless plug. Yes, yes. Uh, we well, love those people. We love those people. They're great. Uh, Futaba and Jim Wilson are, are awesome. Which we might have Jim Wilson on the show. Yeah, we are inviting him. We, we did talk. Gonna, He's more than excited him. about coming out. Yeah. But um, at that gym, they have a bunch of different people who teach different things, uh, whether it's fit, physical fitness stuff, physical fitness, yeah. uh, motai, boxing, boxing, all these different things. Ooh, no, jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. And we have a, one of the guys there, he does uh, kickboxing, and he also does Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. motai stuff. And um, he was asking me about what we do, mm -hmm. and he wanted an example. And everybody wants an example. They want to try to, <laughs> all the time. A, a little more background this guy is about a foot taller than him um about the same weight maybe a little bit more but pure muscle this guy is, is not just a trainer but he's also a, a bodybuilder he, he does show so he's he's ripped yeah so go ahead go ahead, go ahead sorry so then and again he 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 likes you know he, he's trying to understand what we do because it's so different to him yeah so i said all right so you mean I can throw whatever I want and you're going to be able to defend it? Yeah, okay, go ahead. You know, and I don't tell them what to throw because right. that would be, you know. Yeah, that would be the typical class. Oh, give me a right yeah, punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. give me a right punch. But I said, throw whatever you want. And he, being a kickboxer, decided he's going to kick. And before he can get that leg up, I've already hit it. <laughs> he's like, and he tries it again and I hit the other leg and whatever. Right. And he couldn't believe He's like, he goes, what am I doing to telegraph that? He goes, you're not even looking at my legs. I mean, you know, how do you even know that that's what I'm going to do? Again, we go to our third eye principle. I can see everything move. So it's just a matter of me just understanding what is that's moving and attacking. And, and it blows his mind. I mean, to this day, he's just like, dude, I, I don't know how the hell you're doing that. Mm -hmm. But I, it, and the thing is, a lot of people don't understand. What you don't understand is going to freak you out, right? No, of course. Because you don't, course. Understand, you don't right. get it. You don't have that bridge but, to connect. But to it. us, it, it isn't that I'm super fast or, or you know, like psychic or anything like that. It's just I understand the body. And I understand his positioning. When, when he's getting ready to move, multi fighters have this way of shifting their entire body. So when that leg was coming out, I just understood, oh, it's coming. I don't need to look at it. I don't need to go, oh, you know, I'm looking right in the space. And I boom, and I kick him in the leg. And he's like... Hey, how'd you, you know, how'd you get there so fast? So you're saying there's like no lag time in the recognition to your action? No. Shouldn't be. Why would there be? Hmm. If you understand he shifted his body to, to throw a kick, you, you see that hip, you know what's coming. Right. Whether he throws it or not, you do something. Yeah. And the, and the kicker is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the kicker is that but I'm, I'm in the right range because uh, he's going to kick me. So he knows he's in the range of kicking. And I know he kicks. So when I see that little shift, my leg just has to move up. I wasn't even trying to kick him. I just bang, you know, I just, just, I just met it. Tap the top of his foot. Yeah, yeah, I just met it. And boom. Like, oh. <laughs> and, and because he's throwing a little power to it, he gets hurt. <laughs> right? Because, that discouraged him. Yeah, okay, like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, 
But it isn't. It isn't a Chinese sacred book. You know, it is none of that stuff. It's just logical. You know, based on what I know of him, hmm. and, be, and and understanding where we are. You know, sure, his hands were up here. But like, even his stance probably gave it a lot yeah, away. Exactly. You know, so it's not that I'm doing anything mystical. Right. I'm looking at the logic of the mechanics mm -hmm. of the body, of what it has to do, of what it can do, in the position that it's in. Yeah, that's why I said perception and understanding. Yeah, and, uh, and I understand that part of it so well that I don't have to worry about things like that. Sure. Or you shouldn't have to. You know, you, you, you start to understand. It's just like when you're walking down the hallway and you're reading a book or something, and you feel something different, and you do this, right. and you miss, because, again, you understand. You feel things, you, you under, oh, okay. Your peripheral souls, a shadow came by, something's in, oh, you know. Yeah, that reminds me again of the, the book we were just talking about. Uh, talk about the idea that your brain perceives so much more. Right. And we're the ones that kind of fight that idea. Yes. We walk in and we see somebody concerned. And when we walk out, and we're like, we don't know why we walked out. Well, because that person was scared out of their minds because somebody was holding them up. Yeah. You didn't see the gun. You didn't see anything. But you understood. You're like, mm, something's off. I'm going to go this way. Yeah. You don't really know why, and then you find out, oh, there was a shooting, or there was yeah, a robbery yeah. that happened there, and you're like, oh my god, I missed it, oh, I'm so lucky. But it was really your brain's survival instinct right. activating it and, and yeah. saving your life. And, and, and Gavin Gilbert calls it intuition. Mm -hmm. He says, if you can control your intuition, you can go to casinos and win. <laughs> Is, that, is it really controlling, or is it more just uh, understand it. understanding it and understanding, allowing yeah, it to? What, what you're un, what you're, that unease that you're feeling mm. when somebody walks in the room and you know they're, they're, there's something wrong, and you just say, oh, you know, something's not right, and, right. and you, you want to either get up or just walk away or, or do something else. Yeah. That's what that is. And, and he talks about a lot in, through the entirety of the book. Uh, it's a great book. It's called Gift of Fear. Uh, Gavin DeBecker is the guy's name. And um, it, it, it's... It's one of those, it's not really even a help, uh, self-help book. No. It's just... Him talking about his life. <laughs> yeah, of what all the things that he's done, things that have, that have happened, and things that he investigated. Right. And in all of those things, like whether it was a rape case or, or some employee shooting up, because there's, there's... Even another, suicide. Yeah, suicides and all these things. And people will say, oh, the guy just snapped. But when he investigates, he's like, no, he didn't snap. This has been going on for three or four months. It's a progression. It's a progression. Oh. And you start to realize. Oh. And that's why. Oh. So would you God. Like, I like when his brain lights up like this. Oh, the, going back to the example of the guy and then the, the kick, there's no no attack that could ever be spontaneous. There has to be a progression for it to, from, from the beginning, from its conception. <laughs> to its actualization. And if you can pick up on all the in-between stuff, you can intercept it before it comes full full force. Yay, gold star for you. Oh. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, it's not mystical. There are so many cues for the guy to do what he's gonna do. Yeah, nothing, nothing is just random. The guy can't just throw a kick. No. You gotta set that up. You have to do certain things. Your body has to be positioned a certain way that you understand, oh, I'm gonna throw a kick. Be in a certain range, being exactly from where he was. He wasn't close enough to just punch me. So yeah, okay, that's, this is gonna be a kick. <laughs> See, logical. Now you realize what it is, right? <sighs> just like when you jumped on me and I'm gonna fall back, I understood what has to happen. If we're both in the air as we're, we're dropping down to the ground, yeah, I just have to twitch my body. Yeah, had you braced, you would have been hurt. Right, if I, oh shit! I would have fell. If I let go, now I'm, oh good, I pre-fall and, and, and I'm controlling the fall. Now I land on you and I win. <laughs> Same exact thing, right? <laughs> you win. You know, I mean, uh. that's, that's the logic of it all. It's, it's not that I'm doing anything crazy or mystical or, you know, from Kung Fu theater stuff. You know, I don't have any wire words on me. I, I just understand it so well. That yeah, it would be funny to have a team running around with you with the wires. Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, that, and, and, and I'm glad you finally figured that part of it out, right? Thank you. Because now, now it shows, oh, that's what this is all about, <laughs> right? And, and again, we look at, you know, we, we look, we go deep into these things and understand what is the body doing? What does it have to do to do those things? What does the brain understand in order for those things right. to happen? Right, we, we, always, we always use this thing about, you know, if you can get the other guy's brain to constantly stumble, yeah. he's not fighting you. He's constantly trying to get his brain bearings and straighten out and... You know, but if you can keep, you know, it's that whole keep going on the barrage thing until the guy cannot come back, right, from it. Right. 
but that's what you're doing. If I can constantly keep your mind occupied, whether I'm hitting you or just, you know, doing whatever, pushing you, whatever else, your brain has to react to this. Right. You didn't just look, keep, try to keep looking at me. I know you tried to. Right, right, right. But you, you, <laughs> I'm trying to illustrate a point. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you're trying to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. But I knew your head was there. Well, yeah. Me pushing you. Because at, at one point, I did lose the brace of my elbow. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to catch myself. <laughs> right? In your brain, that's your brace. Oh, shit, straight up, straight up. Straight up. You know, don't let it see. Don't let it see. Right, but right. That simple thing of me doing that, your brain's like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, let me... Right, uh, as subtle as it was, it was there. We're gonna replay <laughs> this in slow mo, and we're gonna see it. Right, <laughs> you're gonna see me straining to be. I'm still looking at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, and that's me fucking with your brain. Uh, you see, that's the logic of all of this stuff. That's yeah. where it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Once you realize what's going on, it's like, oh, you know, that's what's happening. Yeah, there's these aha moments sometimes make me feel it's really dumb because it becomes such a simple idea and you're like, wow, what the hell was I thinking about? <laughs> and I've had a few of these. I've had a few of these, but I- I've always appreciated that you don't just give me the answer. No, I let I you find work it. for it. I work for it. And uh, apparently I'm not that smart because <laughs> <laughs> it takes me a while to get it. But once I do... Well, you know, here's the thing. You, 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 with all the information that we've given you, and then we talk about stuff, and then something clicks. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, realization. Hold on. Uh huh. Light bulb moments. Yeah. And Danny loves those. Yeah. Danny says, when the student gets to that point where they figure something out, he loves to see the light bulb just flashes. Oh, cool. You figured it out. And, and then we were talking about teaching earlier. That is a wonderful feeling to cause in somebody else. Oh, yeah. That's why and, I enjoy what I and, do. And, like, and, look, I mean, I got a kick out of watching you look like an idiot. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You're and now it's on camera. <laughs> You're all welcome. It was all to teach you guys a lesson. <laughs> what do you got on your clock? Where are we at? Probably a lot longer than we think it is. Well, uh, we just did. Well, another, okay. <laughs> another half, half hour. hour. We're probably well, at an hour now. Yeah, we're. <laughs> well, it's time for us to say goodbye for this segment. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Yes. Thank hopefully you for joining we'll, us. So hopefully, somebody else will be joining us. Uh, oh, yeah, as yeah. soon as we set that up, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you guys. And if you guys are enjoying these videos or our conversations, please make comments. Yeah, yeah. On, if you guys have uh, any questions, channel. we'd love yeah. to get uh, yeah. your feedback on that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because I think. Um, you know, the past that we've had, we have people watching it. They're watching it. Yeah. But um, nobody's it's in secret. Comments. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, subscribe and like. You know, do all those things. I don't know where the buttons are, so I'd say, oh, yeah, subscribe here, Prince this, then whatever. Um, you know yeah, where it is. Please uh, comment on some of the stuff that you're hearing. And let us know what you think. I mean, we could be just full of shit. You know. We might so, just be. We might just be. Yeah, Prove us sure. right, please. Prove us right. <laughs> By questioning things. All right, so... Again, thank you. I'm Rick. And I'm Nagy. And we'll see you guys on the next Colleague Conversation. Have a good night.